This is Channel 2 News, coverage you can count on. Good morning. Today we have a story about a special birthday one local woman celebrated over the weekend. Plus, we have an interesting story about a lawsuit over bears that alleges death threats. And we'll have local reaction to the agreement between West Coast dock workers and their employees. These stories top your news right now at 4.30. It is Monday, February 23rd, 2015. Good morning. I'm Andy Gabar. I'm John Potter. Hey, good to, good news at that dock strike. Tentative agreement. Hope. Fingers crossed. Yeah, Hopefully, well, yeah. we'll get to that story. First, we'll check it. Jeff, how was your weekend, Jeff? Hey, oh, there. pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, had a good weekend. Uh, kind of chilly out there, though, yesterday. It's going to be about the same today, a little bit cooler. Temperatures, especially as you had out in the morning in the 20s, so dress warmly today, 44 for the high. More on that in just a few minutes. Good Monday to you. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Well, that agreement between West Coast dock workers and their employers is bringing a sigh of relief for trucking companies here at home. One driver we uh, spoke to said as long as he's been driving, he's never seen a labor dispute quite as bad as this one. They've had strikes down there. Uh, they've had slowdowns. But other than that, it, this is probably the worst. Man, well, news of the tentative contract taking care of the cargo backup in California has NevCal Trucking excited to get their drivers back on track. Much of the backed up inventory is going to be handled at the 29 West Coast ports. That takes care of one quarter of all U.S. international trade. The five year deal must be still approved by the 13,000 member International Longshore and Warehouse Union. The agreement allows the ports to resume full operations. And a family of three is without their home after a fire broke out in Winnemucca. Yesterday, the fire crews were called to the 1100 block of Cinnabar Street near West Haskell and Hanson Streets. Their crews located a mobile home on fire. Fortunately, two adults and one child did escape the blaze. The cause of the fire remains unknown. The Red Cross is helping the family find a place to stay. Meanwhile, firefighters in Lyon County are working to find out what caused that fire at an industrial facility in Mount House. Lyon County fire crews were called to the scene just before 4 p.m. yesterday. Then they called in help from three neighboring counties. The fire was contained. No injuries reported. The cause has not been determined. And two people are dead after their car collided with a semi truck over the weekend. It happened on US 95 in Min Mineral County near Mina, Nevada. NHP says the two occupants of the car died shortly after the accident. It happened sometime between 6 and 8 a.m. on Saturday morning. A stretch of the highway was closed for several hours. Traffic was diverted to State Route 360. The semi truck driver was not harmed in the accident. Investigators are still determining the cause of the crash. And new this morning, a ski race that usually takes place in the Sierra was canceled because of the lack of snow. The just under 19 mile great ski race between Tahoe City and Truckee will not be taking place on March 1st as previously planned. Earlier, the dry winter prompted the cancellation of the World Cup Ski Cross and Snowboard Cross races at Squaw Valley. That's the third time the race has been canceled in the last four years, which only once happened once before, uh, before the 2010-2011 winter. Ouch, it hurts the pocketbook. To see and look all at the things. temperature here. It's been, a, well, it's been a while since we've seen the 20s. <laughs> What is it? What is it? They think this is winter or something? Yeah, Jeff, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, it actually feels more like winter out there this morning, but you're right. A dire situation out there. A drought continues. We desperately need the snow for the mountains. Had that little system move through yesterday, but it stayed to our south. And they did pick up about uh, five inches or so around Mammoth Lakes. Uh, yesterday. That's about it. It's a little bit of snow down to our south and 47. That was the high yesterday. We're gonna be colder today. If you thought yesterday was chilly, well, it's gonna be a little bit colder out there to, uh, yes, uh, today uh, uh, compared to yesterday and out there right now. Definitely a chilly morning dress warmly today. Very cold out there. 25 in Lovelock, 21 in Fallon. John, you're right. 25 degrees. One of the coldest mornings we've had just about all month long with our mild month of February out there right now. Temperatures in the 20s, 25 degrees. At least the winds are light, but 
but definitely uh, very chilly out there this morning. And it will be another cool day today. That low pressure system uh, stays to our south, so we won't see any precipitation around here. Maybe just a few clouds from time to time. Uh, and otherwise, again, a cool day out there with temperatures uh, through the morning hours only in the 20s as you head out the door this morning. So again, dress warmly 35 at noon. Remember last week we were like in the 60s at noon, so much colder out there. 44 for the high today. Coming up, we do have a chance for some rain and snow heading our way by this weekend. Yes, we'll talk about that. Complete weather in just a few minutes. John and Andy, have a great Monday. Back to you. I heard rain and snow in there. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> this morning, we do have new information on an ugly battle over bears in Lake Tahoe that now includes a lawsuit which alleges death threats and acts of libel. Richard and Adrian Evans say they called wildlife authorities back in December of 2013 after a bear broke into their car in Incline Village. And wardens say the same bear had attempted similar break-ins in weeks before and showed continued aggression toward humans. Officials elected to euthanize the animal, which an animal protection group called the Bear League opposes. The Evans family alleges that the group then launched a smear campaign against them on social media, which included an anonymous Facebook post threatening their lives. But the Bear League's lawyer says all of the statements cited were made by people who are not members of the group. The lawsuit is headed to the Washoe District Court. It seeks $50,000 in damages. And federal land managers are putting plans on hold to return almost 200 Mustangs to rangelands in central Nevada. The BLM had planned to release 186 wild horses into the Fish Creek herd management area after they were treated with fertility control drugs Friday. But now a rancher in Eureka County has appealed the plan with support from county officials. He says the BLM made cuts to his livestock allotments while allowing more than twice the amount of wild horses the area can support. The BLM says the area's normal level of wild horses would be somewhere between 100 and 170. So, in Health Watch this morning, if you've been a little sneezy and congested, you're not alone. No. No, <laughs> a lot of us. Sorry, I missed my cue. We're not talking about the uh, flu or the cold. Uh, Landon is uh, live this morning at the Sparks Marina, and uh, yeah, he's talking allergies, right? Hey, Landon. Yeah, good morning, guys. We are talking allergies. It's a little cold this morning, so that's certainly good news because the cold is kind of condensing it. But the warm February that we have been seeing has made it a little bit challenging and more allergies for people across northern Nevada. Now, it's not just northern Nevada, but really all over the West Coast. From California to Texas, millions of people are starting to see the effects of seasonal allergies. And here in northern Nevada, really, it's no different. February, remember this, saw five days of 70 degrees or warmer, meeting many trees, got a little confused. Confused trees, they started to bloom. Now the predominant pollens right now for today include elm and juniper trees, with the forecast in the low to medium range today. Yes, I um, probably be sneezing a lot. I do sneeze a lot in the spring. Well, it's pretty amazing. Uh, do we already have spring and are we going into summer or are we going back to our winter, we hope? It's such an unusual uh, time of year. I've been here, what, 38 years now and I've never seen any climate situation such as we have now. It is a weird one, that's for sure. Now the forecast is expected to be in the medium high range a little bit later on in the week. But for now, you just kind of got to enjoy the cold because I am a sufferer of allergies. Uh, normally for me, it starts in about March, late March, early, early April. Recovering Health Watch live from the Sparks Marina, Landon Miller, Channel 2 News. All right, thank you, Landon. You're not alone. A lot of us suffering here. Looking around the nation this morning, health officials in Clark County have confirmed another measles case in the Las Vegas area. All of the possible cases here in Washoe County have turned up negative, but in the Southern Nevada Health District, officials have seen six measles cases since the beginning of the year. Officials say the latest case is an adult who recalled being immunized as a child, but could not provide shot records. These six cases are the first to be reported in the Vegas area since 2011. Yeah, they think there's one in uh, Elko, too. Turning to our community now, a local fraternity visited the Veterans Guest House in preparation for a charity event there. Sigma Phi Epsilon toured the Veterans Guest House on Locust Street yesterday. They say that they want to help bring more awareness to the brave men and women in our community. We're going to have an event on March 12th and just raise some awareness and raise some money for them. 
and uh, hopefully help them out. I know they uh, are working on getting another house, so hopefully we can help them out with that. SIGEP is going to host the event on March 12th, serving all-you-can-eat chicken and waffles mm -hmm. from 7 p.m. to midnight. Very nice. A local woman celebrated her 101st birthday a few days ago, and over the weekend she received a rock star reception. Here she is. She's been called many things. She's been called the Queen of Lemon Valley, the Mayor of Lemon Valley, the Matriarch. So we'll just call her the Queen Mayor. Pretty cute Queen Mayor. Friends and family celebrated Elsie Olson's special day at the Wayside Bar on Lemon Drive. She was born in North Dakota and worked as a nurse for decades in places like Truckee, Winnemucca, and the Reno area. And we were lucky enough to listen in as she told stories about her life over the past century. My only transportation I had first 15 years and 20 years was train. I had, we had no car. I got my first washing machine when I was 45 years old. I washed most of the clothes with my hand and I washed for what a neat lady. Elsie was joined by four generations of her family at yesterday's party. It was a lot of fun doing shots with her. <laughs> I think they made people of heartier stuff back then. She doesn't look 101. I'm sorry. They should have checked her ID. Yeah, she's. I don't so believe cool. it. Neat lady.